Hey everybody, great to see you all today. Today we're going to talk about the backscatter snoot system, how it works, how you can use it to change the look of some of your photographs, what its advantages are, and some of my thoughts about it. We'll look at some test shots and um, how it works in operation. It consists of these two pieces, and we'll get to it in just a moment. Okay everybody, so now we're going to look at the the two parts of this system from Backscatter. The first part is this um, MF1 Backscatter Mini Flash and the second part is the snoot attachment and the way they've designed them is they've designed them so they'll snap together and work as a unit like this. Um, obviously you don't have to use the this um, unit you could figure out a way to connect it to some other flashlight that you have but this is built together to work like this. All right. Okay, so first up, the MF1, to turn it on, you've got this silver button here. And then to use your strobe powers, you've got this red button right here. So you hit it five or six times really rapidly. And it flashes green to say it's ready to go. Then you turn this on to get the blue light, and then you can, um, you can get some strobe, uh, some, some, some light coming out of it. And it has uh, three levels. One, two, and three. When you attach the snoot system to it, you then can control the amount of light coming through and raise it up and down. So now it's acting as a spotting light for you. And then when you want to use the strobe to power it, you would then use this red button to set your strobe level. The second part of this is these, let me turn that off, are these two units, one's oval and one's circular. And they slide into a little pocket on the snoot and they slide in into those different circle sizes of light will allow different amount of lights to come in. So depending on your subject and how much of it you want to light up, you can use these you can slide those in and out to get different lights in. So you can see, when I have it all the way up, I'm going to turn it up so you can really see easily. I've got the widest aperture and the highest light. And then as I bring the aperture smaller and smaller, the amount of light going through decreases. And that then spots it. So the smallest one is just a little bit bigger than the thumb. And then the largest one is like the size of a bit smaller than your palm and of course depending on how far away you go you can change the size. Alright and then if you use the oval ones the oval ones will allow you you can turn the strobe so so you can turn the snoot so you get a different angle so you can have the light fade to the back depending on the angle that you're using. So as you go down in size, again, the amount of light coming through is going to change. And this is good for something where you're shooting it head on, um, like a nudibranch or crabs or something where you want to have some light hitting the front and then fading away. Okay, so here you can see how I would have this set up on my camera rig. So I've got the the two units attached here, the MF1 and the snoot, and I'm just using a ball joint to connect it up. And I have a second, an extra ball joint right here to connect it up to the to my housing rig. And then this is my macro lens down here in the port. And here's my little fish subject. So just to show how the illumination works, I can turn it on, increase the power, increase the power. And then I have the circular unit in there. And I, as you can see, I can just reduce the amount of light that's coming through. So it's just a spot on it. Um, so larger, smaller and smaller, etc. So that that's how the lighting will be controlled and obviously when you're in the 
water and you're actually doing this, you're going to have a lot more movement and, going, and stuff going on and you'll be able to move the strobe up, the, the unit up and down and back and forth to get your focus light to be in the right spot. All right, and then <clears throat> this unit only works as a optical flash unit. So it's got a connector right there. So what I do is I have my, I regularly have my two strobes on and they both have optical connectors on. And then when I want to switch to using the snoot, I'll just pop off one of them and pop it into the unit on the back there. And then I usually just would then just turn this down or turn it off depending on what I want to do. Sometimes I want to have a little bit of light coming from this so it's not completely black. So I might turn this down to one of its lowest settings, like three or four down like that. Or I might just turn it off. Um, and then I'll take my shots, do that. And then when I want to switch back, I just remove the optical fiber here and connect it back up to my to my Acolyte strobe like so. So that way you can have your, your two different systems working. And in fact, you have three types of lighting. You have your regular two strobes, if you want to use that. You can have just this going, or you can combine the snoot with one of your strobes to get some side lighting or a little bit of extra light. So you don't just have this circle like this every time. I think it's important to think about that. You don't want to always have the same kind of lighting. You want to have a variety of type, different types of light and different types of image. So it's nice to be able to use the combination of the strobe, two strobes, single snoot or snoot plus strobe all in one unit and just by just popping off this optical connector here. Okay, so what I found was this has six powers or six levels on the on the um, MF1. I found I used basically five or six for 99% of my shooting. And that allowed me to get anything from F20 to F29 at, um, I was shooting at 160th or 1 200th of a second. And what I think you'll find is that you don't really need these lower levels too much um, for most macro shooting, but um, I just used five and six. And then depending on how far away I had the light, um, that, that affected how much power I needed or how much um, f-stop I needed to compensate. And so you can just see, I'm gonna have the side strobe here. I'm gonna have this one go off as well as this. So if I'm just, shooting regular subject I can just boom like that and then if I want to I can just turn this off and just have the the one strobe fire so and it takes a couple of seconds to recover and there you go all right all right so here we go with a few images that I took on the recent trip to the Philippines hope you enjoy
Okay, so my thoughts on the Snoot system. I think it's pretty versatile. Um, it's nice and light. It's easy to travel with. It, it's pretty compact. And I like the way you can use the Snoot system in combination with your other um, lighting system that you use on your rig. Uh, by having two strobes or one strobe plus a Snoot or one Snoot, it gives you a lot of versatility while you're diving. It allows you to come up with some different options for lighting and image making that uh, you don't have when you just have the two, the two strobes by themselves. So overall I enjoyed using it and I would, I'm definitely planning on using it for most of my other macro diving just so I have the, the versatility. Cost wise it's about $600 to purchase uh, plus tax. So the, the MF1 is about $400, the Snoot itself is about $150 and then the battery and charger which you have to buy separately um, add another 40 bucks or so, so I think that's $590 and then taxes um, and that's current in the summer of 2022. I don't know if it's going to be going up in price. If you want to see some more snoots um, images that I took, uh, look at my earlier video of macro photography at Atmosphere Resort. Uh, I had some snoot images in there and I also show some other ways of sh shooting with your strobes, uh, regular strobes. So if you want to see some more uh, underwater macro images, take a look at that. I'll put a link in the description and a link at the end of the video. All right, so if you have any questions about using the system or any others in general, just put them in the comment section below and I will answer them as fast as I can. I hope you enjoyed watching this and if you enjoy it, subscribe, like, and give me some ideas for other images, uh, other videos that you might want to see. Alright, catch you in the next one.